Good evening, and welcome to the Valley Board of Selectmen, September 22nd, 2014 meeting. Just as a reminder, this meeting is being audio and video recorded digitally. It's 7 o'clock. I'll call the meeting to order. Mr. Clark. Yes. How are you tonight? I'm doing well, Mr. Mary, and yourself? I am doing pretty well. I need to have you lead the Pledge of Allegiance for us tonight. Okay. How's that? <laughs> I'm honored. Thank you. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jeff, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Why? I'm doing well. How are you? Chairman's comments, and I have none tonight. We have citizens' query from 7:05 to 7:15. It's uh, that'll be in about three minutes. We also have an appointment tonight at 7:15, and it's Fire Chief James Broderick to discuss grant award. So the first item on the agenda is general business. And item number one is request from Girl Scout Troop 75124 to hold annual caroling on the common November 30th. Jane Copeman White, the leader of Girl Scout Troop 75124, has requested the use of the town common for the annual caroling on the common event. This is this is annual event held by the Valley Girl Scouts. The Board of Selectmen needs to vote to authorize the Girl Scouts to undertake this annual event. And we have a response. Just, uh, yeah, just background information, Mr. Chairman. So, um, from 430 um, to 530. 430 to 530, okay. I'll give you the motion, Mr. Chairman. Second it. Motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. General business number two. Ratify a road opening permit application from National Grid to open 17 Ice Pond Drive to repair a chronic gas leak in the street. Emergency leak was repaired. Okay, the. Give me the motion, Mr. Chairman, if you want. Okay, I'm just, I'll looking, second that. I'm just looking for item number two. National Grid. It's uh, ice pond for a gas leak in the street, which was a customer complaint. Emergency leak already repaired. Permit is for documentation only. And insurance coverage. The highway and the conservation have signed off. just before the cul-de-sac which the leak was located. Okay, is there any discussion? We, we have a motion on the floor. We did get a, a motion, right? In the yeah, second. I gave a motion check, second. Uh, okay. I'm trying to keep track of myself here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. OK, 
Okay, just so everyone is aware, Citizens Query is open from 7.05 to 7.15. So, um, should I speak up during this period? How's that? I haven't you have been a part of this quarter? process. Yeah. Well, um, my name is Phil Town, and you may have read a letter that I sent to the town of Rowley, an open letter, um, and I was hoping to get a little bit of uh, feedback from the selectmen as to why the, uh, the, the photo of our town uh, was taken 15 minutes earlier than scheduled, and um, also proposed that there be a bylaw change um, to ensure that something like this doesn't happen again. Um, we, um, we were there on time for something that was important to us and, um, you know, th th this whole celebration, I think it was a great thing, but it's a real letdown to, uh, find out that we wouldn't be part of this and, you know, even though there was a storm, um, it should have been rescheduled if, it, if we were really in that much danger. It should have been postponed to a later date, later in the day. Or well, we were in that much danger, and we did postpone it. We just moved it ahead. But you was, can't postpone to the. You can't to, postpone that. Direction. Well, we didn't postpone. We moved it. Moved it ahead. I mean, the people were there. The people that were in the picture were there, and they were ready to take, well, what have about the picture taken. Screaming into the comments. I didn't notice people streaming out of the common. I did. I saw lots of people coming into the common, and they're like, "What's going on?" Well, as the chairman of the board of selectmen, I have to listen, listen to my public safety people. If they tell me there's a chance that somebody might get hurt, that there's a severe thunderstorm watch in the area, and it turned out to be true that there was a severe thunderstorm watch, we got lucky. Right, and someone on the common said there was. A thunderclap even before the picture was taken. If that's the case, the, the common should have been cleared immediately. So if something had happened, then it would have really been a, a fiasco. So <laughs> the, the important thing was you, public safety. The, the, well, picture should have, the picture should have been secondary and it should have been rescheduled to a later time. You, just, you don't schedule something uh, before it's time, because there are people still... There were people here from California that were on the common at that time. Okay, and the people the, in California the cameraman, are not residents. The cam that they were residents. They were founding families of this town. They got invited to this. And so they're more important than, than residents that live here? No, not at all. But they're just as important as residents that live here. Okay, so I'm sure that if we reschedule to later in the afternoon or the next day. <clears throat> we have to deal with the cameraman. We have to deal with the setup. Our public safety people are telling us <clears throat> that they don't feel it's safe. It's a no-win situation. Well, it's a no-win situation for the town of Rowley. We don't make the right decisions, and that's and why a bylaw needs to be in place so that something like this does not happen again. We made the right decision, Mr. Town. In my mind, we made the right decision. We could not second guess the weather. Now, I understand that you had your son out there and it was 80 degrees. Well, it's not my son, it's my daughter. Well, whatever, you had a child was out there. There's an 88 year old woman that came in on a walker and she had been in every photograph her whole life. She was heartbroken. We, heartbroken. What does heartbroken mean? When my mother died, I was heartbroken. Well, I guess to maybe feel like you're disenfranchised from your town. Maybe, you know, maybe it's not as important as, as your mom dying, but it's, it's important to some people in this town. And yeah, you're right, it's important. People were there, they wanted to get in the picture. But we cannot control the weather. If I could control the weather, I wouldn't be That's sitting immaterial. here at this table. That's immaterial. Of course, it's not immaterial. The, we weather, had the weather should have stopped the event right there and then and you should have postponed to 
to a later time. That would be correct protocol. So we got one person that's upset sitting here tonight. No, there's more than one person. In fact, the petition is building. And if we had just canceled the whole thing, we'd have had 600 people sitting there complaining. So we think, tried to accommodate what we could accommodate with what the conditions were, period. I think people would have understood if, if their lives were in danger, they heard a thunderclap, we're clearing the common, we wouldn't take the picture until a later time. And, and gives rescue every, gives and the town a chance to regroup. And take the chance, chance and take the of chance of other people getting injured, try to get off the common. Ipswich lost two people over there under that same circumstance. They were trying to leave and try to get out of the Cranes Beach, and they got struck by lightning. So we got the picture taken, and then they could leave. Period. That's why we moved it ahead. But see, that's the problem right there. Moving an event ahead, that's, 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 that's a bad way to do business. I agree, under normal circumstances, but this was not normal circumstances. So we had a severe calling, thunderstorm you're warning. You're to do it later. When? Well, I'm going to be proposing that we do a redo on, on Thanksgiving weekend when we can get a lot more than 500 people together for a picture. There's a town that 500 people is just a fraction of this town. And well, I, I, I think we can know, do better as a town. As, as, I, as I mentioned when I first started this, it's a no-win situation. For me and I think it would, it would be a real win situation if we did it right. You got to get on the committee? Where were you a year and a half ago when we formed the 375th committee? The committee worked for a year and a half putting this whole thing together. And this is, this is more than just the committee. What if this happens in other situations? That's why a by, bylaw is probably necessary so that you don't have, you, you, you don't schedule something and then it's, it's not a back to the future situation where you have to go back, you know, like if you schedule two o'clock, you can't tell the people that were there for two o'clock, oh, you missed it by five minutes because you showed up at 10 of. It's like, that's just the wrong way to handle something. And if you can't, if you can't um, communicate that in time, you have to postpone or cancel, but you, you just don't do it that way. It's the wrong way to do things. I think cancel's the wrong way to do it. If we could have got it done, and we did, no, I think within the time frame that was available, and if you look at the advertisements that were for that day, it'll tell you right at the bottom of the, of the list, time considerations. The time is not cut, cast in stone. Subject to change. Subject to change. And we knew it was subject to change because when we were standing out here on the 4th, the Right Reverend Mr. Hagopian said a prayer because of the forecast thunder showers for Saturday. So we knew there was something out there that was possible. Okay, so if you make a change, subject to change would mean to a later time. That's you know, not what it said. It said subject to change. Okay, if that's the way you're going to do business, then a bylaw needs to be addressed. And how do we go about getting that going? This, this, this was a, uh, an isolated situation dictated by the weather. I mean, a bylaw isn't going to cover a picture on the common. I mean, well, might, we we have to go by it. public circumstance. I, I guess they can say that we apologize to those people whose picture didn't get taken, but under the circumstances and the, the committee in charge of the outing <coughs> made a decision to run it early so that people could get home and get out of the way before the weather hit. And we <coughs> apologize, I guess, or they apologize. We all apologize for the fact that some people didn't get in the picture, but it, it's a decision that you, you make based on what weather conditions are, and, and they did turn out to be, be quite severe particularly in the town next to us, and, uh, you know, like I say, once again, we're, we're well, sorry that some people missed out, but if you want to try and get a reschedule later on, then, you know, that, that's, that's fine. We can certainly take a look at that, but what was done was done, and a bylaw, I mean, I'm not even sure what a bylaw would say well, the in reason regards the to this, but... bylaw would be important is so that... What would the bylaw say, that if you have a picture taken on the common, you've got to go by well, that no, time? Well, no, the bylaw would, would, would cover some other things as well. It would cover, it would basically be public events that 
um, the town of Rowley um, is scheduling. If they if they can't be scheduled, if you can't actually have that event on time, that you postpone it to a later date or you cancel it. That's that's this protocol. That's basic decorum. Okay, well, I mean, bring, bring in a bylaw that you want, and we'll, you know, certainly we'll take a look at it. But I mean, at this point, uh, the picture's been taken. I'm not sure if the photographer can go back and take another one. But I mean, if you get a petition, bring it in, and we'll, we'll, how, we'll how certainly many, consider it at that point. That's all we can the, do. Do the selectmen consider? Uh, I mean, a it's a matter of petition. I don't know how many people we had in the picture on the common. Uh, I'm guessing that it's going to be quite difficult to get. I mean, everybody says they're going to be there, but on the day, if I can get more on, than on a Saturday than afternoon in November, in November when there's football being played and everything else, you're going to have a hard time. I'm thinking I, I that, that that's when there will be a lot of people home from school. Well, but, well, Thanksgiving. Residents. I mean, every other year I go see my son in Las Vegas for Thanksgiving. So I mean, it's there's, there's bad times for everybody, and I guess we we apologize as a community for putting the picture on 15 minutes early for for public safety purposes, but. We have our public safety officials and the Board of Selectmen and the committee that, that put on the event and made a determination that under the circumstances we needed to change the time and, and bring it up. If if we canceled it, then how do you get the word out to everybody that, you know, for over 15 minutes that we, we've canceled it? They don't have any idea that it's been canceled at that point. You know, if it's a day before type situation, it's those storm where you cancel on the day before, it's one thing. But well, you're talking about a time frame of 15 minutes that... If the People announcement aren't get were made notified at the time and then that the event was supposed to be scheduled, which was 2 o'clock, everyone that wanted to be there would have been there. And let, let's say the, uh, the police, chief of police or the um, fire chief gave the all clear uh, at a certain point. Um, at that point, everyone was there that wanted to be there. And that's when, a, you know, a decision where the, the town could come together as a town and make a decision. The selectmen are there to make a decision and everyone's on the same page. Everyone knows what's going on. From wh what I was told by a number of people, it was very chaotic. Like people didn't know what was going on. They didn't know they were even, there were people on the common that weren't even sure. They, I guess the picture was taken and some people were there for the picture, but they weren't in the picture. I don't know. I, I guess all I can say is, uh, you know, I have to debate the issue. Any, we're not getting anywhere at this point. We we apologize that some people got left out of the picture. It was done for public safety purposes. If you want to try to put something together to have a picture retaken later on, I think we'll, the board would certainly take a look at that. But uh, you know, this, at this point, what's done is done, and it was it was either going to be taken early or delayed for another day, which in, is is hot enough to get the word out. To what what day when when most people can make it? There's going to be people that wouldn't be able to make the picture if it was done two weeks later, Thanksgiving or, or whatever. So no matter what we do at this point, someone's going to be disappointed. I understand you are with your family, and I'm sure there are some other people too. But it, what's been done is done, and we'll certainly take note of it. And if you want to try and reschedule something, then certainly uh, it, it can be considered. Okay. Well, I guess that's. What we'll have to do if they, I guess if there seems to be enough of a consensus from enough rally people, I think that uh, that that will have to be what what goes. You know, I mean, we'll certainly, we we'll can certainly get to take a people, look at. It. We can get 500 people or more interested in, in a retake. I think it deserves a retake. So what well, I would suggest, see what you can do and bring us in the information. We'll see. I think the board would be willing to at least discuss it anyway. I can't. I don't speak for the board, I only speak for myself, but we'll certainly put it on the table and take a look at it. I don't think, I don't think there's anything more we can do than that. It was, what's done is done, and like I say, we apologize, but and how, at, at this point... Uh, how does the bylaw get put in place? You've got to draw sure. something up for, for town meeting, <laughs> and like I say, I, I don't see... I'm not sure off the top of my head, I've been a selectman for many years and I'm not sure what kind of a bylaw you can put to have public events held at a certain time if public safety dictates that they shouldn't be held at that time. So, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know, it's not a discussion for here today, but I mean, I take a, certainly take well, a look at it. And, you have uh, plenty other put something together. important business to, to uh, address this evening, so I'm, I'm sure I've taken up more than my, my time here um, and I appreciate at least uh, getting some open ears and 
we'll see where this okay, goes. Thank you for coming in, and we appreciate your input, and we'll be looking forward to hearing from you. Okay. Well, all right. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Okay. <laughs> thank you for coming in. Good night. Good night. Citizens' Query is closed. Okay, general business number three. Road opening permit application from TW Excavating to open Central Street at the intersection of Dexter Drive for new water service to Dexter Drive. Okay, we have a road opening permit application. Actually, the water superintendent has not reviewed this application. All of the sections are complete. Can you add a little uh, information to that, Jeff? We, uh, that's for me. Yep. And <clears throat> through some misunderstanding, uh, we were told to drop the permit off and it would get signed interdepartmentally. That was not true and we were misinformed or Somebody made a mistake, okay. whether that was us or mm -hmm. somebody else. So uh, we got called on that at about 2.30 this afternoon, Yeah. but I was in Gloucester. I got back here about 4 o'clock and the water department was closed. closed. Okay. So I was wondering, in the interest of time with weather closing in and all that, if you could approve the thing subject to the water department's approval, and then I'll go get that tomorrow. I just had one question. Yes. Uh, Dexter Drive has like three houses. Are you building a fourth? I, I'm, I'm it has four. No. What a water main. I guess well, my question is, the water main wasn't put down oh, Dexter there, Drive there, there, originally. There's a water main. The uh, Mrs. Hawksworth's property was supposed to get connected to the new water main. It didn't. So she has an old line running. Oh, okay. Up so this is for the street. Hawksworth house, in other words. Yes. Was there. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, the police did send, a re send in a letter, and uh, the fire chief also sent in a letter. Uh, police Chief Robert Backer says, Hi, TW Excavating has submitted a road opening permit request that is on the agenda for tonight's selectmen's meeting. They would normally ask the water department, police department, and fire department to sign off on it, but they submitted it without those sign-offs. Since it is on tonight's agenda for approval, can you please review the attached permit request and let us know as soon as possible if you have any questions or concerns? That was to the police chief. Police chief. And there's also one sent to the fire chief. So, don't, the police department, I'm assuming, can't really read the name, but I don't know if it's the chief or not, but somebody signed for the police department. The chief did. Chief did, okay. Is that water main on the same side as Dexter Drive or is it across the street? Across same the street. Side. Same side. Same so side. Not going to block the road. Okay. Well, there'll be a uh, partial. partial, that's all. Yeah. The road will be open, kept open. Yeah, and what we're planning to do is get everything done and then open that for a minimum amount of time. Okay, the highway department also signed off, the fire department has signed off, and the conservation agent has signed off. I'll give you the motion, Mr. Chairman, subject to uh, approval of the water department. Second. In case there any further discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, will the board uh, hold off on signing until we have that? Yes. Yeah. Well, the superintendent indicated she needed to look at it for, you know, and so we'll just keep it here. Yes. Yeah. Do you want me to pick it up tomorrow and bring it to her? Or? Yeah, that, that's that's fine. Okay. Yeah, you could do that, Jeff, and then bring it back, and then, and we, then I'll bring it back. we'll get the selectman to sign it. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. This all, just so you know, this all came up almost by accident because we assumed that Sue Hawksworth was hooked into our main. But we couldn't find a shuttle. And it turns out the original road builder, six years ago, forgot to hook her up. So this is fixing yeah, that. That's all right. That's no problem. It's just, just the administrative paperwork is a, can, be a <laughs> can be a nightmare, as we all know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Okay, our next item on the agenda is a 715 appointment with Fire Chief James Broderick to discuss grant award. In order for the Fire Chief to sign the paperwork, the Board of Selectmen needs to vote to name Fire Chief James Broderick as an authorized signatory on the grant paperwork. Also in order to expedite the process of grants going forward, the Board of Selectmen can vote to extend this authorization to Chief Broderick to sign state grant paperwork for all future grant awards. <coughs> and this is a grant from the Emergency Management Agency. So, do you have any comment on it, Chief? Uh, just to let you know what it's for is um, a couple of years ago uh, through emergency management planning grants that we can get to the uh, NEMA, uh, Massachusetts Emergency Management, we've been trying to upgrade our radio capabilities in town. And one of the first things we did was get mobile repeaters for the fire department, radio, and a um, one that could be used by the police department that's currently in the, the chief's car. Um, what the next part of this was going to be is get one of those repeaters for the police department put in the uh, supervisor's uh, cruiser so that uh, it would allow them the ability to uh, talk back to the base station in areas in town that we kind of have dead areas. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a little bit better than we are because the different bands are on, but they still have some dead spots where if they're on a portable and they're in certain areas, they can't get back to the base station. Right. What this will allow us to do is talk to the car and the car will talk to the base so that we don't have any breaks in communication. Like I said, it, it works well in the fire department, uh, Tahoe. It's just giving them their own uh, ability, ability to, to do that. care of it. <clears throat> yeah, I know it's up in the Newby Road, Boxer Road yeah, area. Yeah, there's a dead spot yes, up so. there. Uh, so this would uh, be uh, an easy way of overcoming that uh, deficiency. Now it would give us both agencies that can talk to each other uh, in yeah. fully now with this in place. So. It's it's working out, and um, the uh, stipend for the emergency management director is the match for it. So we have to pay for it first, and then they reimburse us. We okay. have the money to take care of it. So okay. So we just need to. Uh, is there any other a motion to Mr. Chairman authorize the chief to be the signatory? I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Also, could we get a, uh, a second vote to allow the chief to be authorized to sign state grant paperwork for future grants? I'll give you that motion. I'll second it. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> So we're all set, Chief. Do you need to sign? Is this the one that needs to be signed, or did we sign it wrong the last time? Or? Well, I'm trying. We can probably sort that out tomorrow, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nope. kind of That's fine. Um, <clears throat> so he's got actually the original public grant. Oh, that was the original. Okay. Oh, but we there's, a, there's a number of things in there, so we will have you sign one of them. Yeah. Because that's to okay. be notarized and all that stuff too. So. Okay. That sounds good. And I'll swing by tomorrow. Yeah. I'll probably have to lunch. Okay. Okay, the next order of business. Right, Thank you, Chief. Good night. Is new business. And number one is appoint Alex. You're gonna have to help me with this name. Suchinelli. 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 Well, I'm guessing. We're gonna appoint Alex to something. <laughs> As an alternate member of the Agricultural Commission. Agricultural Commission is requesting that you consider appointing Alex of 239 Main Street Valley Mass to a vacant position as an alternate on this commission. Alex currently is leasing land at the Bright Street Farm where he is growing an impressive variety of vegetables and flowers. He is quite knowledgeable in all aspects of agriculture and we feel he would be valuable asset to the commission. Thank you for your consideration. Diane Schott, Secretary. I'll give you that motion. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Aye. 
New business number two. Advisory from the ABCC for Retail Sunday Opening Time. Effective October 23, 2014, off-premises retail alcoholic beverage licensees will be permitted to sell alcohol beverages between 10 a.m. and, I'm sorry, be beginning at 10 a.m. on Sunday. The Board of Selectmen, <coughs> Yalbro Inc. DBA Route 1 Liquors has notified the Board of Selectmen that they will be opening at 10 a.m. The Board of Selectmen needs to approve the request and sign Form 43, which will be sent to the ABCC. Please note that this goes into effect on October 23rd, 2014. Okay. This is a form itself. I guess, Mr. Chairman, under the, the law here, it's uh, they're allowed by law to open at 10, and he's only a, a required to, does not need the approval of like, local licensing authorities, but must notify the local licensing authorities. So. Yeah, I think that's the way it works, Dave, and then we have to sign it and then send right. it to ABCC, so. as, as I, I'm assuming it's approving it, but. Yeah, I mean, I, it says under the, um, Advisory that the selectmen have to approve Form 43, but I, under the statutory authority, do open at 10 a.m. So I think it's more of um, processing the. I'll give you the mo I'll give you the motion to, for the, to follow through on the process. <clears throat> yeah, I, just one one last thing here. They have to have a a vote of their directors, I believe. The corporate board. Yeah, that's a corporate. That's a, that yeah. is attached. On September 17, 2014, the board of Galbro Inc. DBA Route 1 Liquors ABCC license number 10440011 voted in, in a resolution to change the Sunday operating hours from noontime opening to 10 a.m. opening. And it's signed by Theodore Galanis, President Galbro Inc. So, entertain that motion. I'll give you a motion, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So we need to sign that tonight, Deb? So you'll sign up Form 43. It will be sent into the ABCC. You'll get a Form 43 back from the ABCC, signed off by them. Then we'll reissue the um, liquor license that's posted in, in, the, um, in the establishment with the new Sunday hours. Okay. <coughs> Debbie, does this uh, help the uh, foreign people too? I mean, uh, this they is off premise. Um, this is uh, so. This is strictly the um, off premise retail. So just it's just um, stipulates uh, that. Yep. No okay. foreign. Okay, moving on to old business. Old business number one, letter from attorney Donald Greenow, re the sale of chapter 61 land. The filing for this chapter 61 land appears to be in order. The notification has been reviewed by the board, the following town boards, the Board of Assessors, Conservation Commission, and Planning Board. The correspondence from each of these boards is attached. The Board of Selectmen needs to either one, exercise this right of the first refusal, or two, not exercise this right of the first refusal. If the Board of Selectmen votes to exercise this right of first refusal option, then the Selectmen need to sign the attached waiver. Assistant Treasurer Karen O'Donnell will notarize this document. If the Board votes to exercise this right of first refusal, then the selectmen will need to discuss the next steps required to purchase, to pursue a purchase of this property. So, the other boards have uh, reviewed it. Let's 
see. This is from the who is it from? It's Sean McFadden. The assessor, the assessors. We have. Um, yeah. This is from the assessors. My board met last night and having nothing to add to the request of release from Chapter 61 of Map 9, Parcel 23. Only the board, only the selectmen make their decision. We will move forward with the five week rollback. Uh, no problem, the planning board won't be able to take this up until okay, September yeah, 17th. That's just an exchange. Um, okay. Checking down with the, with the assessors to run this request. Conservation Commission. The Raleigh Conservation Commission discussed the above subject at their meeting on August 19, 2014, referring to the letter from Mr. Greenow, attorney representing the Tompkins Desjardin Trust regarding notification of pending sale of a portion of land off Daniels Road, which is designated under the Chapter 61 Forestry. This portion of the property, designated as Map 9, Parcel 23, is currently proposed before two town boards as a 40B development project. The Conservation Commission, in the course of our review, consulted our office files and the recent update to the Open Space and Recreation Plan 2014. The portion of the property subject to this request is not contiguous to previously preserved open space in any government or nonprofit ownership. Nor does it appear that the property has been identified previously for potential as conserved open space. It should be noted that the portion of the property subject to this request is bisected by a roadway easement that runs east to west, effectively slicing it in half. The Commission does not recommend or request municipal acquisition for the purpose of open space protection of this currently undeveloped forest property. The subject parcel is currently in an undeveloped state and does contain regulated wetlands resource areas. Thank you for your opportunity to comment on this Chapter 61 conversion. The Planning Board, at its September 17th hearing, voted 5-0 to recommend to the Board of Selectmen that the town should waive its option to purchase the parcel identified as Assessor's Map 9, Parcel 23, owned by trustees of the Tompkins Desjard and Trust. Some of the reasons cited for this recommendation have to do with the fact that this property is not designated by the 2014 Open Space and Recreation Plan, OSRP, as lands to protect. Also, the Planning Board noted that the town resources are currently engaged in the details of purchasing and redevelopment planning, redevelopment planning of the 187-acre Girl Scout property on Weathersfield Street, which is a major conservation effort by the town. Furthermore, due to the site's acreage, its situation in proximity to existing residential projects, Emily Lane and residents at Rowley Country Club, the Planning Board recognized the property potential for private residential development, possibly as an open space residential development, OSRB. Okay, the legal paperwork seems to be in order. So is there any discussion on this? No discussion, Mr. Chairman. I'll give you the motion to not exercise the right of first refusal. Okay. I'll second that. Motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to take a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. <coughs> aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. So I guess we don't need you after all. Yeah, we do. Do we? Yeah, oh, we do. You still have to be notarized? Okay. <coughs>
Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Business number two, discuss special town meeting warrant articles. <clears throat> the warrant just closed a couple of hours ago. The funding for year two physical 2015 of the Mass Corp contract exceeds the $2,900 in the collective bargaining reserve. We need $17,146 to fund the second year of the contract. There are significant funds in Article 5 of the May 5, 2014 Special Town Meeting to fund one year. I'm sorry, to fund year one. Debbie will transfer, transfer the surplus of $6,000 to offset the physical year 15 amount. Debbie is just starting to put together the warrant. There are a number of funding articles that Debbie will be working on with the physical team this week. We have a revised tentative assessment from North Shore Vocational School for the former Essex Agricultural School that was submitted after the budget was set. We need approximately $3,603. The library was notified that the sprinkler heads must be tested in, in the fire alarm system. This came in after the department was set after the budget was set this will cost approximately five thousand dollars the cemetery building needs a new door and masonry work around the door the anticipated cost is eight thousand dollars the harbor master is seeking thirty five thousand dollars for the replacement of sections of the dock it is unclear as to the status of the fifteen thousand that was appropriated in the capital budget borrowing account for the replacement of rot on the town walk in years four and five funds are planned for the launch dockhead and gangway ramp think afloat the harbor master is also seeking to update the harbor bylaw on the fees and fines on the cpa articles dave peterson will discuss the article to redirect the brad street baseball field appropriation to fund the development of a little league field and soccer fields at the other playing field locations. Dave will also discuss the Greenbelt Endowment for the conservation restriction for the Girl Scouts property with the CPC. The Water Board has also submitted the three articles they discussed with the Board of Selectmen during September 8, 2014 joint meeting. The board will review the draft warrant on September 30th. The selectman will sign the warrant on October 6th. <clears throat> so that's what we're looking at, I guess, pretty much for the town meeting, special town meeting. Is there any discussion or questions or comments? Chairman, uh, the, uh, I'm looking down through the list here, it's, I, I think the one I would have some issue with is the Harbor Master looking for $35,000 replace the section of the dock. I mean, that, that when we got his requests in as part of the capital budget, we had appropriated $15,000 to be spent on the docks for this year, and then we put off until years two and three, or four and five, it says here, uh, you know, replacement of the docks or further, and there was no indication at that time that the docks were in such dire need that they had to be immediately replaced. Yeah, he's saying now that, in fact, that's the that's the issue, is the irons that hold the docks together, there's there's little plates on each end of the dock, and you put a rod through it to hold them because they, they, that gives them some flexibility. He said they're pretty much rusted out, and the fact of the matter is that if they try to replace those, they're probably going to have to replace some of the wood also. He's looking, he's got 13 docks, uh, and as a matter of fact, he showed me a picture on his cell phone tonight when I first got here. Uh, the emergency boat float, which is off the end of the bulkhead, that one has actually collapsed, 
and right now they've got it tied together with rope. So, I don't know, I, that, that's a lot of money, but I don't know. He did say that if the selectmen were interested in looking at it or whatever, that he could get together with them maybe on a Saturday or something and show them exactly what, what's going on there. But. Well, I think it'd be, it'd be good to find out the 15000 that we appropriated. Is, can we, because we're going to run into a problem with funding, I would imagine. I mean, uh, how, how normally at this town meeting we transfer money from one budget to another. Exactly. Or, or those kinds of things. And we're, we're starting to talk uh, a pretty sizable chunk of funds here. Yeah. And in addition, we... Uh, the town administrator and I were at the finance committee meeting two weeks ago, and when we requested the, what was it 8,000, wasn't it, for the, the for the air conditioning here, they requested that we consider putting the 8,000 back into their reserve fund because that, well, they only have 50,000 to begin with, and it's early in the year to be taking up that kind of a chunk, and from what some of these other things here, it looks like this might be a year when... <laughs> things are going to be going wrong, so yeah. we can possibly well, fit the eight thousand back into the the finance committee. That would be that would be good, but I just don't know, you know, on a fiscal basis, um, if we can fund all these things without. Uh, I'm going to be working on that this week with the fiscal team um, because um, the, the um, request for appropriations were were more than we thought. Um, going back to starting with uh, funding year two of the police contract, we have sufficient funds to fund year one, and that's in an account, so we can transfer the surplus of that to offset this and sort of mitigate some of this. But I, there's there's no, uh, we're we're really um, <laughs> we're still in the first quarter of the fiscal year. Uh, we can't be taking money out of budget lines um, under some idea that that money's not needed. And transferring it for these things so we will have to do probably some raise and appropriate articles and uh, at next week's meeting when you review the draft warrant you can make a decision uh, at that time if um, if there needs to be uh, articles that need to be prioritized or saved for uh, the spring special town meeting if if we are not able to uh, take this from the local receipts that we are anticipating for our revenue right. and he did say to me that if we we wanted to talk to him. He, if we give him a phone call, he'd come back tonight to talk to us if, if you thought that was important. Well, I, I just, I'm just wondering, uh, from a fiscal standpoint, I, I don't doubt that the work needs to be done. I'm just wondering, is there a way that we could get by with the fifteen thousand and maybe a smaller appropriation, I, I, and then look at the next year's capital budget, which we'll be looking at again, so that because the, the voting season is is about done. Yeah, but he's, it, what he mentioned to me tonight was if he'd like to put the floats in on the 1st of April. So that's not all that long and far away. That's part of this fiscal year. Yeah. So uh, I think the 15000 was for the uh, WAF repair. Yeah, the bulkhead. I what it was. The bulkhead repair. Was, okay. So uh, it, there is a question whether we can actually take that and use it on the floats or not because it's not specific to floats. So, I mean, I would hope that we could... It's uh, replacing rotted areas on the town wharf. Yeah. So I don't... So I, I think, isn't it all inclusive when we say that? We really mean well, the it, landing general, area. It sounds general. Oh, yeah, we I, try to yeah. keep them general. I mean, we can look into that. I, what I, I would hope... Maybe for next week's meeting, if we knew a little, a little more information where this is such a large request. Yeah. Uh, well, we even certainly if can... Even if Bill comes in next week... Uh, we can put it in the wire and then we can always... I, well, I think next week will be your time to really diligently review these articles, uh, but until I can figure out the warrant just closed, so this just came in today, I need to review the uh, revenue projection. Exactly, and we receipt. need to talk to the physical committee. So we're going to do that, to the fiscal team. And also team. Uh, maybe get an opinion from the town accountant as to that, that WAF article, whether that could be... Uh, I, no, I, I have every, uh, my position is that uh, replacing rotted areas of the town wharf. Uh, well, the capital planning committee uh, team yeah, looked at that. Correct. That is mm -hmm. our position was, you know, it was very discretionary because there were so many areas that had some rot. So there was an understanding that it was any of the areas there that um, were potentially, um, you know, uh, 
harmful to people if they could right. step on it and fall through a plank or whatever yeah. on that whole area. And, and so part of the problem this fiscal year was we had to take so much money for the last year's snow and ice mm -hmm. right off the top. So well, hopefully it'll be a less costly snow exactly. year, although nothing's guaranteed. But yeah. I, you know, I would I would just ask if maybe Bill could come in to the next meeting I and further yeah. explain mm -hmm. at the same time. If we'll we could, if we could ask him to kind of take a look at it and see if yep. he can cut it back, because uh, I, I think we're going to we're going to be tight. And obviously, the more money we try to raise and appropriate now, it's the less amount we get in free cash for the future. So yep. it's a it's a balancing act of what we really need. And at the same time, if he can get by with less than the thirty five, we can look at it. You know, moving it up when we look at the, the capital well, budget for next year, we can move that money up so that it'll. Yeah, he indicated to me that he thought that was a little high on that figure. Right. But he wasn't sure about the prevailing wage portion of of any type of uh, that type of work. Yeah, that's a killer. So he wanted to make sure he was covered. So okay. I mean, uh, yeah, I think we get some feedback from the from the physical team and then uh, talk to him about it and see what we can right. come up with. Because the other things are kind of locked in. I don't think there's much play for yeah, and this, any I mean, of the others. There, there's stuff these that are, has to right. be done. And, and, and the vast majority of those others are These are just the highlights of what came in. I mean, yeah. there's a few other articles that are, are really um, uh, housekeeping things. But um, it's just so you know, I mean, we're still, I'm just trying to put this together yep. right now. Okay, okay, we will certainly have him in. And, and any other, um, and, uh, you know, I'll, obviously I'll consult with you, uh, Chairman Mary, if there's any uh, other individual you need in for next week. We can schedule. Okay. So is there any other discussion on that, on the warrants, warrant articles? Okay. Oh, a new business number three, and it's the town administrator update. Ready to go? Uh, sure. Uh, the library exterior painting project uh, has been awarded to MJS Construction of Wakefield in the amount of $17,642. We're working to get the contract signed right now. We have the contractor coming out for a site meeting with the library director, and um, uh, Doreen, uh, our, our assistant town administrator, will be there to go over the uh, details of the project with the contractor. So that's moving forward. Just a, um, excuse me, Debbie, just a quick question on that one. That's quite a bit lower than what we anticipated. Right? The, yeah, the, there were we some. Over, um, 20, we yeah, so it was 20, so it came in a little bit low, low, so um, that, that was good. It was actually kind of a surprising bid because there was one other one that was, what, up in the $40,000 range? Yeah, there was. Really? <laughs> yeah, there was one that was quite high. I, I, I happened to be here when the bids were open and um, when this one came up 17 you start to say to yourself well <laughs> where did this guy miss the decimal point you know yeah. but it, it was a yeah. legitimate bid so that's that was right good uh so we've um we're putting together the town hall window project so uh, that's supposed to be in the central register on wednesday so that one will be released on wednesday that's a solicit contract so it's um this is a uh that's a bid uh, for the remaining windows um, on the second floor, and then we're starting the windows on the first floor. Richardson sales agreement uh, for the Girl Scout property has been sent to the Girl Scouts of Eastern Massachusetts a couple weeks ago, so I'm awaiting. They've sent it off to their attorney. I haven't heard anything, if they have any questions or comments yet. So we're trying to finalize that document as soon as possible. Um, the Conservation Commission is reviewing the proposed Greenbelt uh, conservation restriction. The Girl Scout property, that's a requirement um, because we're using community preservation uh, funds, so we have to have a, a third party hold the CR, similar to the Bradstreet property where we have the Autobahn. So um, the Green Belt is a, is a similar organization, and we've been working well with them on this project. Uh, and the last one, um, I met with um, the water superintendent, um, Mary Beth Weiser, to discuss uh, concerns that I've seen over the, some of the unemployment expenses. So the water budget, the enterprise budget, as you know, um, has 10000 appropriated for unemployment, uh, which may cover what I'm seeing come in as expenses from some former employees, former temporary superintendent. Um, so the superintendent has expressed a willingness to institute measures to prevent any unnecessary unemployment expenses uh, whenever possible going forward. Unfortunately, you know, we have to keep working at this to make sure that we can avoid some of these costs. I'm just concerned from what I'm seeing 
with the ten thousand dollar appropriation. I hope that there will be no um, uh, cost overrun in that line. But she's, um, you know, she's um, willing to uh, institute some measures now to hopefully prevent any of these unnecessary claims from coming up in the future. Okay. Is there any comment on the administrator's comments? Okay, we're down to announcements. And the fall special town meeting is scheduled for Monday, October 27th, 2014 at 7.30 at the Pine Grove School. And that's what we were just talking about, those Warren articles. Uh, we'll be meeting on that night to uh, review those and act on them. West Nile virus, WNB has been Detected in mosquitoes collected in Rowley. Residents seeking information on West Nile virus should read the information on the town's website or contact the health department at 978 2231. The town has the following 948. What did I say? 978? Yeah. They didn't put 978 in there. No. That's what fouled me up. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. The town has the following vacancies. It's probably going to be the chairman of the board of selectmen here if he doesn't sign <laughs> up. Fall special, yeah. Fence viewer, two positions. Wood lumber and back inspector. And zoning board of appeals associate, two open seats. Historic commission, historical district commission, three seats. Parks and recreation committee, two seats. For more information on these positions, please contact the selectman's office at 948-2372. Rowley Food Pantry is in need of donations. The food pantry is open Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and Thursdays from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. And compact fluorescent light bulbs may be recycled at the Rowley Municipal Light Plant. Light bulbs can be brought down during normal business hours. And these are the curly Q type ones. And if you put them in a small plastic bag and brought them off the light department, they will properly dispose of them for us. Uh, they will not take the fluorescent tubes. Okay, is there anything else that anyone has to say? Hearing... Make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I'll okay. second. We've got a motion to adjourn. <laughs> and as a motion to adjourn takes precedence, we will vote on that right now. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. And ladies, thank you. Another shot. Nice to meet you.